welcome to another very special episode of the Platformer Chronicles. Today we chronicle the story of Arrow the Acrobat, the mascot for Sunsoft during the early 1990s, during the platformer animal mascot craze. I would argue the 1990s as a whole was the greatest era for video game mascots. Arrow was one of the coolest, and unfortunately he never got to number three once again. There was Arrow the Acrobat one and two. I found Arrow's game to be unnecessarily difficult. It's a little tricky to figure out even what to do, to be quite honest, but I still think the character was cool and it was worth seeing the character continue. To me, Arrow seems to be a character that's kind of inspired by Tails, a character that flies, things like that. And this is my badass Arrow the Acrobat vintage poster that came with the Super Nintendo release. And here it is, Arrow the Acrobat on the Super Nintendo. Definitely one of the best Super Nintendo releases. And what's really cool about Arrow the Acrobat is that back in the day, whenever it was a different release of a Sunsoft game during the time period, you'd usually see Arrow on the Sunsoft logo. They used to also do that with Gex back in the day, as he always appeared with the Crystal Dynamics logo. It's sad that they don't do that stuff anymore. And they also did something like that with the, the company that owned Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Here we, here we got the box. I always loved the boxes for the uh, Super Nintendo games. The rectangle, they made it look kind of mysterious, I think, with these dots and everything. Very neat and cool, right? But what makes this video even more special is talking about what happened with this character, Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. Zero was actually rivals and enemies with Arrow the Acrobat. Zero first appeared in the original Arrow the Acrobat, and he was enemies with, with Arrow. So this is a spin-off game from the Arrow games. Now, what other series can we think of that did something like this? Well, how about Shadow the Hedgehog, right? In 2005? That's right. So, this is like the original version of Shadow the Hedgehog. In many ways, I actually would say Zero's game is better than Arrow the Acrobat. It's more difficult, but at the same time, Zero is a cooler character than Arrow. He's such a badass character, and I doubt a character like this would ever occur nowadays. But as a fan of World War II cartoons with the Looney Tunes, playing this game gives me vibes of World War II, and it's such a badass feeling. The way he crashes in the desert, the big desert in the first level, I really feel like I am him. I am stranded. It's just such a cool vibe, and a very violent. It's kind of like a cartoon, kid-like version of how World War II actually was, and it's kind of neat to have that kind of experience if you got to play Zero back in the day. If I'm correct here, I think this is before Zero from Mega Man debuted. So, is Zero the original Zero? But Zero is not a Zero, because he's such a great character. There, there he is, Arrow the Acrobat on the Sunsoft logo. How cool is that? And I always loved this picture right here. This is really badass artwork. Now back in the day, they used to have people that painted the, the, uh, the cartoon characters, the platformer mascots on the box art. And we do not have any of that stuff today, which is sad. Zero knows karate very well in the games. And he's a mysterious character. Now this is a reproduction box. So I own a reproduction cart for Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel on the Sega Genesis because this game is very rare now and it costs a lot of money if you want to own the, an original copy of Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. Sadly, Zero never got to have a sequel. There was no Zero 2 or nothing like that. It's too bad. I mean, this is even before Conquer the Squirrel was controversial. I would say this is controversial, and it's controversial in like a badass 90s kind of way. And it's just awesome that they did something like that, because this is like the first time I could really recall a, a video game star having a character that gets a spin-off game. Of course, another thing that comes to mind is Wario getting, getting his own uh, spin-off title of Wario Land after Mario Land 1 and 2. That also does come to mind too. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of Zero and Arrow. Are they some of the greatest video game mascots of all time? I would say yes. Thank you for watching The Platformer Chronicles.